Mark Willis. Mark Willis. Here. Pamela Cousins. Here. Melissa Goshorn. Here. Donna Astenso. Here. Wilson Perrin. He is not coming. Michael Schisler. I don't see him. Uh, Joanna Stallings. Here. Stacy Taman. Don't she's see there. her. Stacy's okay. here. I'm not. <laughs> here. She's, she's is waving. Um, myself, I am here. Tony Navarro. Don't see him. John Norris. Here. Okay. We have a quorum. All right. Thanks, Ruthie. Uh, so um, I have a, a mo this. Well, let me read my little statement here. Uh, the Calvert County Blueprint Committee uh, will conduct this meeting virtually on May 3rd, 2023 at 2 p.m. via Zoom. Please note that the meeting will be recorded and posted online publicly for reference. Uh, with that said, uh, to review and approve the agenda, do I have a motion to do so? Motion to approve. This is Pamela. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right. With that, Dr. Sampson, I believe you are up, sir. You seem to be the star every time. I'm not quite sure why that is. <laughs> All right. So... Pardon, I'm grabbing my the agenda here, but I got my notes up. All right. Um, so right now, um, with our status of our blueprint, um, we are looking at revisions to our uh, responses to questions in the template. Um, we got feedback from MSDE on our responses and they provided us with a form um, with that feedback. So what I will do after this meeting is I will share that feedback with this team. Um, the, the form and the feedback really is about specificity. Um, and so there may be one or two sentences that need to be added to a particular response to address um, something specific that was mentioned. So if, for example, um, we are providing recruitment efforts to attract um, teachers to pursue national board certification, those from underrepresented populations, then we need to add a sentence or two that gets to talk about how um, with more specificity, we are going to actually do those recruitment efforts. Um, so those things are really easy to, to take care of. And we have until March, uh, sorry, May the 9th to make those revisions, resubmit, um, and then we will await feedback. So what happened was we received um, responses that indicated that we were either, that we met or partially met or did not meet. Um, and we got either met or partially met on all of the, the responses that we had. So now it's just a matter of the ones that were partial, going back, um, putting in that, that clarification um, or that specificity and then resubmitting. So again, the form with the feedback that MSDE provided, I will share with this team so that you have it um, and you know the responses that we are addressing. Uh, and then on May the 9th, we will resubmit that form. And then once we resubmit the form, the one or two sentences or whatever edits we uh, indicate that we're going to make, we will incorporate that into the body of the uh, implementation plan, then we will repost the implementation plan. So then that will also be shared with this group. Any questions about that? 
before I move on. Dr. Sampson, it's John Norris. Who's the we that's drafting the revisions and resubmitting them? So our um, our pillar chairs, we all, me along with um, Dr. Johnson, our chief academic officer, and our pillar chairs met with um, folks from MSDE on Monday, and um, and we talked through any questions that we might have had, got clarification from them on their feedback, and so the we is the pillar chairs are working with their work groups um, and the folks who drafted the responses. So the responses being drafted by different writers on those work groups that were done with the support of anyone who had feedback from our community members at our steering, at our uh, pillar meetings or our overall um, community meetings, all of that being incorporated into the writing. So the writers are going to be the ones who take the feedback and determine how to better answer those questions with that specificity. Um, and then that is what's submitted on the form and, and resubmitted. So none of that's being reviewed by this committee before it's submitted? Um, well, so the form will be submitted to this committee today. If the committee chooses to provide thoughts on um, what can be added, then you're welcome to do so. Um, but that does need to be submitted by the 9th of May. And so our writing teams are already on that process, but we welcome any feedback from this committee for sure. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I don't see any other questions. Okay. Um, so that is the only update on our status. There will be three, I guess, resubmission phases um, as needed by LEA. So right now, this is the first resubmission phase. We put in the requested revisions, we submit, and then we wait, um, and then we will hear back uh, sometime before the end of May as to whether everything is fully approved. Um, if not, then there's a second resubmission phase um, in June, and then a third one if necessary um, after that. So hopefully we don't get to that point. We can address all the things that they wanted to in this first one um, and then be done so that we can move on to, to phase two of our writing. So Joe, let me make sure I understand. So the information that we're talking about right now really came in, uh, was coordinated with your office on Monday um it was before my it was fr thursday or friday last week when we but got it was, it was that recent though it, it was last week yeah. yep okay uh <clears throat> joe if that's about it i mean really i mean that is the update so we're going to get a document we'll be able to look at that respond if we choose to as individuals and then uh May 9th is really that deadline to have that back to you. Uh, beyond that, I mean, uh, we can well, move let me, Go ahead. Let me, let me correct you um, in that. So I need that feedback to me um, probably by the 8th so yeah. that I can forward it to the pillar chairs and anything that could potentially be incorporated could be done so before noon on May 9th, because we have to submit everything by close of business. Yeah, understood. Let me look at that because. Uh, and really the eighth was would probably be tight also. Yeah, and what's, uh, so, I mean, when you back up beyond that, you're at the seventh and the sixth, which is a weekend. Uh, so you're really looking at Thursday or Friday. 
getting it and then Thursday or Friday looking through it and then provide back to you realistically for you by Friday. Yeah, and if I could, um, let's see, team review. Um, if I could share my screen for a second, I could show you like one of the items. Oh, All right, can everybody see that? Yes, I can. All right, so I'm gonna. So, for example, right here. Um, so it shows that we address the challenges and our understanding of the challenges. Um, but then they just want us to provide additional details about the challenges faced by priority groups and then the strategies to address those. So while we, we cited many challenges and we cited many strategies to address those challenges, the question asked also about priority groups and our response didn't necessarily talk about those details addressing the priority groups. So if we just add a sentence or two that addresses that, then that takes care of it and will be uh, a yes and meets criteria. Does that make sense? Yes. So I will share, um, I will share that with this group immediately after this meeting. Anything else on that joke? Number three of uh, Roman numeral one. Uh, nope. Okay. We have nothing under new business. Under old business, we're really, I think we're pretty much, we probably need to revise our, our agenda because it, some of it becomes repetitive to some extent because the draft's already out there. But uh, number one under old business is implementation plan update itself. I mean, that's Ruth, Mark, no, I think that you're right. I think it's the same, but um, Miss Cousins has her hand up. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't see you, Pamela. No worries. I wanted to circle back, if I may, yeah. about the um, feedback that Dr. Sampson talked about. Um, my question to you, Dr. Sampson, is if we provide feedback, um, I'm certainly not a subject matter expert in a lot of these areas. So is the feedback vetted um, for um, whether it's something we can be done or legally can be done or ethically can be done? Is that vetted before it's you know, um, made, back, made, in, made into the um, uh, specifics that MSDE is asking for? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I just want to get clarity on the expectation of the feedback. Yeah, and that's why I, I thought initially when I said the eighth, I said, well, maybe it needs to be before then because there sometimes there is a little um, leeway in terms of time that's need, that needs to be given for us to determine, okay, um, this is great feedback. And is this something we can actually incorporate? Um, can we actually do this? Um, most of the time we find out the answer is yes but um, we do need a little bit of time to do it. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Pam. <clears throat> Anybody else before we move on? No, but Mark, back to your question. I do yeah. think we can probably remove that first implementation plan status since it is submitted and we really do cover it under that status update. Yeah. If anyone feels differently, please let me know. I think we're good, Ruthie. And that would just be part of the new agenda anyway. So they would, they thought they needed something else. We could look at it then. So uh, number two under old business is uh, just really a continuation. Is there a public awareness campaign update? You know, so the question comes back, is there anything, Joe, that, that you feel we can do that would help 
you know, when the word needs to get out. I mean, I don't think we're doing that right now, but uh, so it may be a moot point, but is there anything about number two that you think would be beneficial? Um, or anybody for that matter. So, so yes, but when the finish, so we recorded um, the promotional videos last Wednesday. Okay. Um, with your production team and um so they are now editing that and once it's polished and ready to go then that's when we will need you all to um push that information out and we will be doing the same on our end yeah okay um so as, as far as that is right now that's the only thing but then once we have established um so renee daniels our um Chief Communications Officer and I have marked some tentative dates by which we want to put out newsletters. Um, and we're talking about doing a quarterly blueprint newsletter to the community. Um, mm -hmm. And the first one being, I, I think we said June or end of May. But once we are ready to do that, um, what I will need is some information or input from this team um, from this committee to determine what all we want to go in there, what information is going to be important to put out to the community along with whatever updates we have and things that we have going on. Um, but what is it the community wants to know um, from your perspective uh, so that we can get that information out? And then obviously on your end, Mark, um, having your group share that um, as it becomes public. Okay. Ruthie, uh, I, oh, you and I should uh, sit down to talk with CMR. I mean, they're already working with uh, Dr. Sampson, so this is not a stretch. This is just kind of an update on what to expect coming up. Absolutely. I've been trying to keep them updated. There is a ticket. Yeah, I got you. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else have anything on number two, public awareness? Okay. Number three, uh, update on timeline and deliverables. Uh, uh, get Dr. Sanderson, once again, I think you, you know the timeline. Can you share with us what uh, our expectations should be? You, you already mentioned uh, the better things go right now. The uh, uh, We may not need those additional dates for input, but I think there's probably still a timeline that we can expect uh, our draft to return to us. Yeah, so um, let me let me just look at this. Uh, what was sent? So the recommendations uh, will be so MSDE is going to review our plan between the tenth and the fifteenth. Um, and then they will submit recommendations to the AIB to fully approve or not on the 16th of May. Um, and then if there's another revision needed, then that'll happen between the 16th and the 30th. Um, and then MSD would review that between the 31st and the 5th of June. And then another recommendation to AIB on June the 6th. And we're not going to go beyond that because, again, I, I fully expect us to, even in this first revision, um, address everything and be ready to go. But that would be the second iteration if it comes to it. So, Joe, what are we calling the document? Let's just say everything goes perfectly. And by June 6th, uh, we have an unapproved document. It's still an approved draft, right? The um, What does it become, I guess, on June 6th? Um, it would be the it would be the implementation plan. Okay. Um, but it would be phase one of the implementation plan. Sure. Okay. Any questions on that timeline before I add anything else? Okay, so um, in in terms of 
things that are coming up or we have recently done um we had a support session for our national board certification candidates um um two weeks ago and there were seven teachers who showed up um, and received support from our NBC facilitators um, and got very good feedback from that session um, as they prepare for their submission. So our, our national board candidates are gonna be looking to submit their portfolios by the 18th of May. Um, and then we will see what happens in December when they announce um, how many more National Board Certified Teachers Calvert County has. Um, we will be presenting an update to the Board of Education next week, Thursday. Um, and that will be much of this information that I've talked to this committee about. Um, there won't be anything else new because, right, unless we have already um, gotten a response back from MSDE by that time, but I mean, we're not submitting until the ninth, so the likelihood of that happening is very, very slim. Um, so unless that happens, then that update to the Board of Education will be pretty similar um, to what I talked about today. Um, and then we are having a, a National Board Certification Information Session on the 15th of May for any candidates who are interested in starting that process next year. And that'll be virtual. Okay. And that's it. Public comment. Did anybody else before that, anybody else have anything before we go to public comment? I. This is Melissa. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time, but there were some questions from the last um, meeting that I don't believe we've gotten answers to yet. They were captured in the meeting minutes. So, I, I was going to say I can pull them up. I can follow that. I can follow okay. up with that. Okay, great. I'll send it out to the whole group and and ask and with all the questions. Okay. Um, and then the other thing, when we're talking about, you know, educating the public, I know one thing that's come out over the last couple of weeks is the the new pre-K fee. Um, if you don't meet the different um groups, I can't remember levels or groups or yes. what have you. So I'm wondering, is that part of the educational campaign that we're going to be doing so that um, parents know, you know, what that fee is, how that's going to impact them or not, and kind of what the process and how that process is going to be different moving forward with uh, full day pre-K? Uh, for me, I personally believe that it should be. I mean, we in this office, county administrator's office, well, we get those questions uh, routinely. So for us to put that information out, I I think it would be a good thing. So on our end, um, we've had that conversation already. Um, and on our on our uh, blueprint page on the CCPS website, where the videos are going to be housed, we are also looking at um, periodically uploading additional information um, and other videos as pertaining to that pillar. So then um, when I talk to our um, our person over pre-K um, a couple of weeks ago, she was indicating that with regard to the, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting some kind of feedback. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yeah, I think that I think it's fixed. Um, so she was saying that with regard to um, the fee that parents would have to pay um, and all of that information, once the state has determined what that is, we will be also putting that information on our website and sending it out to families. Okay. 
and we can certainly duplicate that effort, Joe, with with what we have available here. I mean, we'll, and we'll talk about that as far as this committee, obviously. But yeah, we don't mind jumping in as well. Got it. And um, I don't know if there's an opportunity because some of this I know is dictated by the state, like the amount is dictated by the state. They mentioned a sliding scale, which as I, you know, as you and I discussed in the past, hasn't been fully defined. So if people need to go to the state and ask those questions, giving that information to the appropriate people at the state level also might alleviate some burden on the county since we're not the one making decisions. Got it. Dr. Sampson, just for my personal knowledge, have is enrollment already underway for pre-K for next school year? Yes. So we've reported some, um, we've been reported to by some parents have come to the commissioners with an email that actually gives a dollar amount. So is that the real dollar amount? Has that been decided by the state? Um, as of last week, it hadn't been decided. Okay. Yeah, because in that it had it listed by family size one through hard to have a one family size with a child, but it could happen, I guess. Uh, yeah. Fifteen and it had two different tiers: three hundred percent above poverty or six hundred percent above poverty, as per the federal requirement. Yeah, and that's the last thing we had to go by, and so that's the only thing we could do until um, okay anything else was established. Do you know if those emails do have that dollar number in there? I don't know. Okay. I, I believe it does. The ones that the commissioners have brought to us does show a dollar amount tied to it. And I think that's why the public is starting to get upset. Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, no, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, the point is, is that obviously we need to be on the same page. And when it comes time to push out the updated uh, information, you know, we're certainly willing to be part of that. Ms. Cousins has her hand up. Uh, what was the source of the emails? You said the parents are getting emails. Are they getting them from the, the school district or where are the emails coming from? Yes, it, was, it appeared to be um, from Calvert County Public Schools in response to them applying for pre-K for next school year. Yeah, my only assumption, again, I, I don't know for sure, but I'll I'll, I'll fact check, um, is that this was based on the original information we got with the three hundred and six hundred percent. So they 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 attached the dollar amount to that based on the information they got from the from the families on their application is what I assume. Um, so I'll have to verify. Okay. Donna, what do you have, ma'am? Oh, Stacy was next. Oh, I... I I was just gonna really just say that I really think the communication or the miscommunication is the key here. Mm -hmm. And that um I agree that it's important that everybody's on the same page with the, the idea of pre-K in every school so that people understand that um Every school is going to have a pre-K, that some programs have been collapsed, um, and that just like it's always been, um, pre-K is going to be determined on the, the three needs first, like your ESAW, your um, IEPs or special education, and then um, the um, socioeconomic piece. And from my understanding, um, they're always stamped. So like if I turn mine in on June 6th at 12 o'clock, it'll say June 6th at 12 o'clock. If Stacy turns hers in on June 6th, but at 1 p.m., it'll say 1 p.m. So then once all the slots are filled, which normally there are not a lot of empty slots left, then they are offered to the people who um, 
like come next. Like it's really looked at date and time. And sometimes um, there might be slots available, but they'd be available at a different school. So you would have to provide the transportation. Like CCPS isn't going to transport you from Dunkirk to Prince Frederick if there's a slot. Does that make sense? So, and the sliding scale, I think, is where um, the the all the questioning lies. Um, and I agree, like the sooner that that sliding scale could get out and be explained, I think all the pieces would kind of fall into place. Communication. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Don. Stacy, what do you have, ma'am? Um, I had a question for Joe regarding the pre-K um, certifications and requirements that are coming up for the assistance. So, um, <clears throat> there's been some confusion as to where the funding for this certification comes from. I know that Joyce King is working with grants so that anyone that is going through the CDA program can receive grant money to fund that certification. But the other requirement could be if people don't choose to do the CDA route is an associate degree. And we do have people that are very close to an associate degree and it would be faster to do that than to go through the CDA process. And then, you know, CDA has to be renewed and all of the, there's other things attached to the CDA certificate. So once you get that AA, it's cleaner for the system, but there's some confusion as to the funding source for those courses. In a meeting that Donna and I attended where Rachel Heiss was a speaker, she stated that there is money from MSDE available to the school systems to pay for these. Are you aware of that? It seems to be a lot of confusion around it. And I just wanna make sure it's accurate information. Um, so we actually met this morning and we talked a little bit about that, but not specifically about funding stores. Um, so in terms of the short, the short answer to your question is no, um, because we haven't been given specific information about additional funds provided for that. Um, I'd have to talk to Mr. Johnson, um, our chief financial officer, and, and, and determine if that has been provided. Um, and if it has, I'm just not aware. Um, but the how is what was part of the discussion this morning as well. Um, but that goes through HR and determining whether or not it's a, a reimbursement type thing or, um, or if it's paid up front and how it's done. All of that, I don't know. And, and, and that kind of depends on how it's, I guess, how it's approached. Right, and I know part of this conversation it's kind of blurs the lines a little bit, so I am trying to be careful of yep. you know, negotiations and contracts and so forth. Yep. Um, from what we understood from Rachel in that meeting was that the LEAs would have to request the money. It's not just provided. It it's a request, but they have funds available mm -hmm. to help to support the instructional assistants that are trying to complete their AA degrees. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so with that said, then I need to talk to Joyce and find out um, because she would have the numbers of staff who are taking each route, whether it be the CDA or the AA, um, to then determine how to go about requesting those funds if it hadn't already been done. Um, but I wasn't aware of that. So I'll check on it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything on timeline, deliverables, pre-K, money, pushing out information? All right, Ruthie, I believe you're up. 
So I do see that we have a member of the public online with us. If you plan to speak, could you please raise your hand? Okay, I'm gonna assume we have no public comment. So we will go to comments, closing comments from the committee. Um, and I will start with um, Pamela Cousins. Thank you, no comments at this time, thank you. All right, um, Ms. Dashhorn. Hi, no comments today, thank you. Thank you, Donna Ostenso. None for me. Okay, uh, Joanna Stallings. No comment. Stacy Taman. None for me. All right, Tony is not here, John Norris. Nope. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sampson, anything in closing? Nothing additional. All right. Uh, Mark Willis. I have nothing additional. Okay. That brings us to the end of the meeting. All right. With that, uh, I would ask if I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I second. Pamela. Thank you, Pamela. All right. All those in favor of adjournment. Hi. I'm sure we have it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we will everyone. And just so you know, we'll follow back up with those comments, uh, Melissa, on those questions from previously and get that back out. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.